Hello, 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 hello. Welcome back to another video. The second video, I guess third video of this um example. Second video for the example, third video like I'm recording today. Uh but yeah. Yeah. Uh <laughs> this one will cover another type of ODE um technique. Uh it's similar to the first one. You check a condition. Well it has to be in a certain form. You check a condition. If that condition does something, then you do other stuff and then we'll get to the example so hopefully this does not take long i think it might actually take long so let's actually get started so as i um mentioned it is going to be similar so it's still going to take the second order ode that's still in the form of y double prime times y prime of plus p of x times y prime of x plus q of x times y of x and that's equal to zero again this has to be homogeneous and so we're going to check a condition and we are going to find some variable that is going to be uh, gamma. So in the like, special case, special case, if gamma is equal to a constant, then we can do a transformation and create a new second order differential equation that is much more solvable than this one and then plug it into our solution and so it's pretty much letting gamma equal to gamma naught which means it's a constant and this is pretty much equal to um this is kind of like the tricky part kind of ish well it's one of like the difficult parts kind of and that's mostly because it's a bunch of algebra so it is equal to q prime of x plus two p of x multiplied by q of x which doesn't seem too bad but you have to divide it by the square root which is already getting ugly um q yeah q of x but that q of x is raised to the three halves well actually it's not the square root it is q of x and it's raised to the three halves so it's the square root of q of x cube. It's mm, interesting. But like the nice thing about it is if you do the numerator first and you get that that's equal to zero, then you don't really care about the denominator because this is going to be equal to a constant because it's going to be equal to zero. And so once when this, um, this is met, then we can do a transformation. So we can have a transformation transformation in which we get a new variable z zeta and that is equal to the integral of the square root of not alpha but a times q of x uh all like i said all over the square root d of x where a is just some non-zero constant and then we get the um we can have a transformation z to is equal to this and an ode that is equal to to psi capital double prime of z plus gamma over two times the square root of a uh, psi prime of z plus one over a psi of z and that is equal to zero and of course because gamma is a constant and a is a constant this becomes a ODE with constant coefficient and we can use it to or well, we can use the table to solve what this is and so once when you do that the solution you'll get psi equaling to or psi of z going to be actually equal to the solution of the original ODE that you've been trying to solve for um, the only difference is we're going to do the substitution from z to x or it's a transformation which we know as stated here so we are now going to do an example 
and hopefully this makes a lot more sense because right now this kind of looks kind of wonky, confusing, and janky. So let's go to the example that we have. This example is telling us to determine the time independent solution to the PDE as shown here. It kind of looks like the one that we did in the last video, but I guarantee you it's not. We have an X cubed to begin with. And then the boundary conditions is from, oh, I guess the conditions, the domain um, we're working with is from 0 to 1 for time being greater than 0, with boundary conditions being u of 0 t is equal to 0, and then the partial derivative of u of x t with respect to x at x is equal to 1 is equal to 1 for t being greater than 0. So, as I mentioned before, we're looking for the time independent solution and we first want to check if this actually exists and well, one exists and two, do we really need to find it? And so we are going to check if this is a homogeneous system. And as you can see, if we substitute uh, u of x t being zero, we'll get that this part is equal to zero, this part is equal to zero, this part is equal to zero, and that'll be all equal to zero here. So the PDE appears to be homogeneous. However, we now have to check the boundary conditions. So the boundary conditions, we have that u of um, 0 t is equal to 0, so that is good. And this one, we can see that this is equal to 1, which is not equal to 0. Therefore, this makes it a non-homogeneous system. So now we have to actually solve the or find the time-independent solution. And so again, like I mentioned, you must explicitly state that we are going to let u of x t uh, be equal to u e of x. And so we are now going to substitute it into the PDE. I'm going to uh, skip a couple steps. Um, if you want a more detailed uh, example, look at the last video. And so what we're going to end up doing is that we're now going to get an ODE that is x multiplied by u double prime of x minus u e prime of x plus x cubed u e to the x and that is equal to zero with the conditions of u of zero equaling to zero and then u of one being equal to one so so what are we going to do now so now again we see that this lovely ODE has an X on the front of the double prime. So we're going to divide everything by X. So when we divide everything by X, we will have UE double prime of X minus 1 over X UE prime of X plus X squared UE to the X equaling to zero. So now we have a little bit much more prettier um, ODE and so now what we're going to do because this is an example of what I taught a couple minutes ago we are going to check the condition of gamma and see if that is equal to a constant remember this is also the same format as the one from the previous example so you can also check if that condition is satisfied spoiler alert it will give you not a constant so we're going to use this one um, though when it comes to like if you don't know which one to use I suggest using the 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 example previous mostly because that one's much more easier to calculate before you do this one so uh, we're now going to find gamma so gamma like I mentioned this is going to be equal to uh, what did I say q of x or q prime of x I think I said q prime mm, I think it was q prime so it's q prime of x plus 2 p of x q of x all over q of x in which that q of x is raised to 3 halves uh, and so when we do the substitution well one we have to figure out what the q and p is p of x is equal to negative 1 over x and q of x is equal to x squared so when we do substitution q prime will be 2 of x this will be plus 2 
times p of x, which is negative 1 over x, multiplied by x squared all over x squared times 3 halves. Um, and so this will become 2 of x minus 2, the x cancel out, or the, the x and the x squared reduced to x. So be minus 2 of x times x to the x cubed. And we can see that the top part is equal to 0. So this is equal to a constant. So we can do the transformation and then solve the ODE. So what do you mean by doing the transformation? Like I mentioned, we are going to define a new variable z that is equal to the square root of the integral. No, the other way. The integral of the square root of a q of x dx or the integral of the square root of a times x squared d of x and then the x squared and the square root cancel out so you have the integral of a x dx which is equal to a x squared over 2. Um, we're not going to put a constant uh, in this one so this is one half um, times x squared and so the nice thing sort of um, about this, which kind of like throws people off, is that because a is a non-zero constant, we have the liberty to actually um, assume what that constant is. So if we let a equal to 1, then we will get x squared over 2. Cool. And so now we are going to put this in our new PDE. So phi's double prime of z plus gamma, which is zero. So the the phi's prime part just goes to zero. Um, and so this should be plus one over a, uh, which a is one, so this should be equal to one. So this should be plus phi's or psi, 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 it's psi, my bad. Um, is equal to zero. Again, we can use the ta uh, table.pdf and because this is very similar to the example that we did previously, we are going to get that psi of z is going to be equal to c1 cosine of x plus c2 sine of x. Oh, not sine of x. It is actually z. I apologize. So, like I mentioned, this is going to be equal to y of x. And so how do we do the transformation? So the transformation is y of x is going to be equal to... So for every z, whatever we put for z, we are going to substitute... Um, for, for every z that we see, we're going to substitute this part right here because we define what z is here through this transformation. So this will be actually equal to c1 cosine of 1 half x squared plus c2 sine of 1 half x squared. And so that is our, uh, that is not our y of x. It is actually our time independent solution, e to the, u e to the x, u e x, my bad, u e x. And again, we are not done here. We have to plug in the boundary conditions. And so when we plug in the Boundary conditions. Let's do this one actually. Yeah. Plugging in boundary conditions. We have uh, u e to the zero is going to give us uh, cosine of zero is just one. So c one. And then sine of zero is just zero. Uh, so we already know what c one is because u, uh, u e to the zero is equal to zero. So c one is zero. So now we actually have u e to the x is actually equal to c2 sine 1 half x squared. And then our second boundary condition, u e to the 1, is equal to 1. This will be equal to c2 sine of x squared. 1 squared is equal to 1. Uh, so sine of 1 half. And we know this is equal to 1. Therefore, C2 is going to be equal to 1 over sine of 1 half or cosecant of 1 half. 
I apologize, this is so wrong. I apologize, this is actually incorrect because the boundary condition is prime. Yeah, it is prime. I messed that up. It does not equal to u e to the 1 is u e prime of 1. So that is my apologies. Uh, so yeah, that means you have to take the derivative. But the good thing is that we got rid of one of the um, trig functions. So we don't have to do much. We do have to use the chain rule. And so this is equal to x. So x c2 cosine. Cosine of 1 half x squared. And then we plug in the condition. Um, u e prime of 1 is equal to 1. So this would be c2 cosine of 1 squared 1 half. Uh, and that is equal to 1. So c2 will be actually 1 over cosine of 1 half. Or secant of 1 half. Therefore, our actual time independent solution is equal to 0 secant of 1 half multiplied by sine of one half x squared yeah that is it for this video um that is it for this i guess not series but like you know examples hopefully my voice gets better tomorrow um i will say it's it, this is so much better than it was in the morning so we are trending in the upwards direction and i'll see you guys in the next video or wherever <laughs> bye